Hi everyone, this is Kyle. Uh, this is the second video on my series to use a couple different tips I have in main stage to help control your backing tracks, your loops, and your clicks. So this video is going to uh, focus on creating and using a button in main stage that will allow you to play your um, song starting from a specific marker and also having a count in so the band can come in together. So I'll begin by demonstrating this. Um, I'll open up a song that uh, my band is playing. This song is called Crumbs and let's suppose we're in practice and we just want to start from the pre-chorus. So if I simply clicked our normal play button um, that I've got here, you can configure it to start from the top or I've got it to start from wherever it's at, but look what happens if I click this. That's not really going to work because we want everyone to come in at the same time and they didn't give them a heads up. So I've created this button that's going to provide um, one measure of count in that's going to be audible uh, for both my click and my loop line, so even people who don't have in-ears in can, hit, can hear it, and then that uh, metronome is going to drop and my other metronome will pop in. It sounds like this. Cool, so let me show you how I did that. So first off, I should say I've created this button in layout mode. You can see it's simply uh, this button right here, I just dragged it in. Second, I uh, went to edit mode. I selected the patch that I want to configure this for. I would recommend just doing this once on kind of a template patch you have and then copy and pasting or exporting that patch and importing it as many times as you need because you don't want to have to do this multiple times when you can just do it once. So in order to do uh, what I just demonstrated, we're going to have to assign multiple uh, mappings to one button. Um, this is something that once I realized you could do it really made my life a lot easier. Um, so again, I click this button down here. This is where we do all of our mappings. Um, you'll notice I have three tabs right here. Each of these represents a different mapping that I've given this button. Um, you can add a new mapping by clicking the plus sign here. And so let me walk you through uh, why I have three here and what having three of them allows to happen. Uh, first off, uh, when you press this button, it's going to begin by launching a panic action. Uh, the panic action is a way to reset the main stage master clock, um, and it basically ensures that when I press it, um, it'll automatically jump to uh, zero, zero, zero on the main stage master clock. So you don't have to have this in here, but I put it in here because I found when I press it, it makes it faster response. I'm not waiting sometimes for the beat clock, you can see right here, to go two, three, four, and start on beat one. So the panic is a good way to reset the master clock. Second, and again, I'm only pressing it once, but all these things are happening. Second, the main stage metronome is getting launched. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I do not use the main stage metronome. Um, I create a metronome in Logic and I import it into a playback plugin channel. However, for this workflow, um, you probably heard when I pressed it, uh, the main stage metronome with that little pop sound came in. Uh, this is a great way to use a main stage metronome. So what I've done is put it to uh, just the generic actions metronome. Uh, I put it when it's when the button is lit up, it's on. Or when the button's off, it's off. But here's the key, momentary behavior. So what this means is you didn't really see it um, because there's no video on my finger here. But I held the button down while I um, was showing you this and that is what caused the metronome to beat one, two, three, four and I released it after the fourth beat. The reason that I did this and that I have momentary selected is because if I didn't have momentary selected you'd continue to hear the metronome after uh, the song started on that portion of the song. Likewise, um, it would play over the house speakers. Really, the main stage metronome is really not very configurable so it works perfect when you have momentary behavior like this because then I can have it for four beats, hear it over the house, and then when I let go, it's off, and I'm back to my regular metronome that I normally use. So that's why it's a metronome. And uh, finally, I have this count in uh, attribute here, this count in, attribute, uh, count in mapping, rather. Um, this is, let's see, under the click. The click is like my master track. All my markers get imported with that. So under click, under playback, play options. I've selected count in. Uh, the reason I have this selected is because by default, if I just play from the top of the song, I don't want it to give me a count in one, two, three, four. I just want it to play immediately. 
So, but for this time around, I obviously do want the count in, right? That's what's going to ha help our band come in on beat one when they hear the count in, including the metronome I just told you about. So, to account for that, um, I've, I've added that button on, means the count in is on, button off is off. But again, I've given this a momentary behavior here, and that's because I don't want to count in every time. So, if I do this once, next time I go play from the top, I don't want it to start counting in. I only want the count in when I play or when I hit this button. So, therefore, I use the momentary behavior checkbox there. Um, so this is how I created it. If you don't want to do this and you want to start from a portion of the song, it's actually not too hard. Uh, you would simply select it with your keyboard or if you had a MIDI controller it would look like this. So here's without using that button. This is a regular play button that will just play from the marker and I would do this. So you see, that's your other option. Uh, I started from the top of the song. I used the normal count in, which would introduce the beginning of the song, and I simply clicked pre-chorus. Because I have my snap to set to bar, it waited till beat one and jumped to the pre-chorus. So if you don't like the idea of creating this, or if this doesn't make sense to you, you can always simply do that. Um, I really like having this option. Um, again, if you want to start from the pre-chorus again, I'm going to hold it down. You can't see me. I'm going to keep my finger on it all the way till I hear that fourth little blip, and then I'm going to let go. And again, that's going to start the met main stage metronome, also start the count in. As soon as I let it go, it's going to put count into off and main stage metronome to off. And it's just going to start the song. It goes like this. Cool, and that's the tip for today.